so I've seen a couple of videos go up on booktube lately concerning the topic of libraries and why people either do or don't use them and for those of you who have watched my channel for the past how long have I been here I'm not even sure three years you guys will know that about I don't know 90% of the books that I read are from the library whether that be because I'm downloading it through my Kindle via overdrive or because I'm just going to the library every week or two to check them out so I was actually very excited when I saw this was something people are talking about because you just don't hear people even mention the word library much at all on booktube so I'm glad this is suddenly a point of discussion before I do get into this topic though one pattern I've noticed and I've mentioned this before one pattern I've noticed that's really unfortunate on booktube and I think one of the videos I'm going to talk about is Just Kiss My Frog's video and she mentioned that booktube is one of, I think she said, like the nicest areas, corners of YouTube and while I agree that in comparison to the beauty community, other communities like that where just every video it seems is filled with nasty comments, a problem that booktube does have is turning conversations into drama. Disagreement does not equal drama and I think that really needs to get drilled into the head of booktube overall. I think it's just that booktube is pretty small so if someone made a video someone really didn't agree with in the beauty community no one would notice. No one but because booktube's small everybody eventually sees that video. That was just thing I wanted to get off my chest in general. It's not even really related to the library thing. I just thought of it because some of the comments on both the videos I'm going to talk about were getting a little bit nasty and I just think booktube overall just needs to take a breath and calm the fuck down. But anyway, so the two videos I'm going to be talking about are Ariel Bassett's video and a video by Just Kiss My Frog. Ariel did a video with Lee Reader essentially just saying they recognize that libraries are a very good resource and they're a wonderful thing, but they just personally, they're just not their thing, not very interested in them, which is totally fine. That's just their opinion. I understand it's not for everybody. And then Just Kiss My Frog did a response video to that talking about why she doesn't really use libraries very much, how she would hope that they would change, and privilege in terms of book buying. So this video is actually going to be more so a response to Just Kiss My Frogs video, but I'm also going to kind of go off on a couple of other topics. I'm not completely clear on the state of libraries in the States versus the state of libraries in the UK. From what I gather, the situation is much better in the States. I was even doing some googling and it seems that a lot of libraries and library uses usage is even on the rise here, but I could be wrong, so if anyone has data or studies on this or any information whatsoever for either country, please share. So the first point I wanted to talk about is just why I personally love libraries, so hopefully I can inspire some of you guys who have maybe never really gotten into them before to go ahead and at least really give it a good hard try, but I'll link any videos that I mention down below including mine but I do actually have a video on how to try and help yourself buy less books and getting over that need to just hoard and have tons and tons of books especially if it's negatively impacting your life one thing I should throw out there is that if you do have the money and the means and you can just buy books as many as you want then just go for it but one thing that I have noticed in booktube is just that we are incredibly incredibly obsessed with the physicality of books in a lot of cases it does feel as if acquiring these books and doing book hauls and being able to just place them beautifully in a rainbow on our shelves is more important than actually going ahead and reading and reviewing them. I know Ariel Bassett did a video and she mentioned it in her why she doesn't really go to libraries anymore video. She had done a video a while ago in the past where she was very excited to get her library card and you know it made you think of that getting your, I forget how it goes, but that Arthur Library song. And that's genuinely how I feel most times that I go into a library. And I really believe, and some of you correct me if I'm wrong, I would love, you know, this is a discussion video, I want to hear your experiences, but so many people who say, and I'm just directing this at everyone overall who says that they're not the biggest fan of the library and the library is really not for them. I really think 90% of those people have not given it a good hard try. I understand that if you're the type of person who's been buying books and collecting them and you're a bibliophile and you have all these beautiful shelves, I understand why attempting to go to the library, check out a bunch of books, remember to return them or to renew them, and then actually have to give them back, especially if you really loved them, I understand why that's strange and weird and maybe even a bit hard, well, first world problems, but I understand how that could be strange if it's not something that you're used to. I should also say I'm not saying that you should give up buying books and just use the library, I, but I really think that if the average person, even if it's someone who loves buying books, were to give the library a good try to go in and have that feeling of being able to check out as many, well, depends on the library, but say 10 books, 10 books you're really interested in, 
bring them home, through them and decide which ones you're really feeling interested in that moment. It's a very good feeling and I should also say Ariel pointed out um, the smell of books. I am one of those weirdos who I love antiques and I just love old book smells so that kind of just adds to it for me. In a very odd way, I almost feel like this would be good therapy, not really therapy, but a good practice way for people who are obsessed with buying books to try and get over that just a tiny bit. Because once you're continually giving back books to the library, I think it's going to decrease that need to just hoard and own books and stare at the covers and organize them, and it's going to increase the importance of actually what's on the inside. I also hear so many people, including my friends outside of BookTube, say that they don't like the library because they can never remember to return the books. Guys, I am an incredibly lazy individual, but it is not hard. If you want, right after you check out the books, set an alert on your phone. That way, a lot, half the time, I don't even have to go back to the library for a month because I can just renew most of them online if no one else was interested in them. But it's really, it's not a big deal. And I think that's the most ridiculous excuse for not using a library. I mean, if you do live an hour from a library, I understand that. But if it's close and it's within reason to go there, it's something you really only have to do once or twice a month. I also want to talk about if you are that type of person who loves owning lots of books, really think about why it is you want those books on your shelves. I personally like to keep books because a lot of times I like to write in them. If they really hit home with me, just passing by the bookshelf, seeing the titles and thinking about how it affected me in a positive way. That doesn't necessarily mean the book has to be good, I should point out. It could just be a really shit fun book that I know I'll reread multiple times. But if a book didn't stay with me in a very meaningful way, I don't feel the need to have it whatsoever. For me, it's also really important in terms of selecting books that I'm going to buy. If I'm going to fork over 10 to $15, well granted, I'm very cheap and I have a whole video on how to, book, how to buy books cheaply, but if I am going to fork over the money for a book, it's generally because it's one I've already read and it's one of my favorites of all time that or it's by an author that I love or I've read excerpts online and I just know I'm really going to enjoy it. But the library is such a fantastic way for testing the waters and one of my favorite ways to utilize the library is reading books that were hyped up on BookTube because I don't necessarily want to go fork over ten dollars for like I just say for instance I just read the Shatter Me series. I had no interest in actually going out and purchasing that whole series but I was intrigued, I was interested, I had a feeling I was either gonna love it or hate it. Checking it out through the library was the best way to do that, just to go ahead and test it. Sorry the camera died but I also wanted to point out to anybody who is even thinking about leaving a comment along the lines of shouldn't you be supporting bookstores and trying to get other people to support bookstores? One, I'm a soon-to-be poor grad student and two, right, because there aren't any booktubers out there doing book hauls and inspiring people to buy more books. Mm -hmm. One topic that was brought up in Just Kiss My Frog's video was the idea of privilege, and I know she kind of brought that up because a lot of people brought that up in the comments of Ariel Bassett's video. One thing I wanted to point out because Lena or Just Kiss My Frog mentions that if you have the money for Netflix and Wi-Fi and buying expensive conditioner. Well, I don't remember the exact things she listed, but she's saying you're probably already quite privileged and you're probably in a place where you really can buy one book a month, especially if it's just 10 pounds or so. I'm phrasing, so I could be wrong there, but I think that's the gist of what she was getting at. I do think it's important to note, though, that if you are a voracious reader, if you read, say, five books a month, if they're books that you want to get quickly, if they're that are new so it's impossible to find used copies of those, it is a very expensive habit. I consider, say, if you read five, four or five books a month, you're spending at least, say, $40, $50 a month, which is over or around $500 a year, which is a lot. And if you're having to give up your cell phone plan in order to buy as many books as you want, or if you're even having to give up buying the razors you want, or if you're having to kind of give up important aspects of your day-to-day -day life in order to buy books, then you aren't in a position to buy books. And in that way, no, you can't afford books. I noticed this especially recently when in my past video, I asked you guys, I said, oh, I found one of my $20 Amazon Kindle gift cards, pick which book I should read next. And the one you guys ended up choosing, actually, I noticed all of them. I had it in my head, because I never actually bought a Kindle ebook, that a lot of them were just a few dollars or free, which a lot are. But these all happened to be new ones, and the cheapest I could get it for was about $12 for all three of the ones I mentioned, I believe. Which really got me thinking just how expensive book buying could get. And again, I understand that there are a plethora of ways 
to get your hands on very cheap books. I have a whole video on different ways to get books for one or two dollars. But the thing that I think is really important to note, and this is also related to the idea that I want to talk about what your idea of the perfect library is. Yes, you can go to secondhand bookstores. Yes, you can really hunt for those books all over. But if you want a book quickly, the only way to do it is splurge and spend that 10 to 15, 20 dollars or to go to the library. But getting back to what I was starting to say, one thing that she, one interesting point that she brought up that I would be interested in hearing from you guys is how you think libraries could improve and what your idea of a perfect library is. For me, if I'm honest, my idea of a perfect library isn't that different from what we already have or that I've experienced the ones I have in the States. They're community hubs where a lot of times authors come and speak. Granted, I live in the middle of nowhere, so a lot of times it's not anyone I'm particularly interested in. But I'm fine with libraries being just a vast, quiet place where I can spend hours and hours studying for class. That's one of the main uses I use for libraries. Get some free Wi-Fi, check out all the books that I'm interested in. I know she was saying that her idea of the perfect library are very kind of small ones where it's everybody recommending books to each other. And I think that's quite a cute idea and I like the idea of that and things like that do exist where I live, you know, little community book swaps. And I think that's nice, but I definitely do believe in keeping these giant libraries with any book that I could ever want. I think the idea of having really tiny ones is very cute and it's very nice and I would definitely attend them but it's for me that would be more so of an add-on and not the library itself because realistically if I want a book I'm gonna go to the library or I'm gonna buy it online. If it's really tiny that's a good place to get recommended books I probably wouldn't have thought about but I do think the government needs to continually to really support libraries to give people that opportunity to get the specific books that they're interested in when they're interested in them. In terms of how I would personally like to see libraries change, I think that the systems for checking out books online really needs to get updated. I was waiting for the Enchanted for like almost two months, which was crazy. The program is called Google Overdrive, in case you weren't sure about how you check out books online through your Kindle. Personally, I've only had really welcoming libraries. I've never met a mean, angry librarian. You know, I don't know how it differs in other countries, but in the States, you know, a degree in library science, because I thought about doing this for a while, is a master's degree, and anybody who is in that field is really passionate about what they're doing. I've never had a bad experience with a librarian, and having one or two of those definitely would not turn me off from going to libraries overall. But another small way I would like to see it change is not have libraries be a loud place, god no, because I think so many students obviously lose them for studying or if I'm trying to flip through a book and see if I'm interested I obviously don't want it to be loud. But I would like some libraries to calm down about say bringing a coke in and having a drink and maybe having an area that's a bit more casual where you can have small snacks that wouldn't make a mess, have a cup of tea. I saw Chauncey Boddington leave, leave a comment because the, li the library personally that she went to, or maybe it was a couple, were just so strict about everything it just didn't feel welcoming. And I don't have that issue with libraries here, but I do wish that in some way they would have a room at least with where the environment was even more relaxed than I guess it already is. Normally I would do a conclusion for a discussion video, but I'm actually very late to go teach a private lesson, so I'm going to head out now, but please let me know your thoughts down below. Also, I kind of rushed through filming this video, so please read the description bar. I'm sure there are things I've forgotten to say, so very important points, well, in my mind, will probably be listed below. Bye.